I'll read there a little bit and make a comment probably as we go. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in an order, for thou shalt die and not live. Amen. Hezekiah had begun reigning when he was 25 years old and had done everything right. The Bible said he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. I mean, he opened up the house of God. He went and got the priests out of the field and the Levites and put them back to work in the house of God. Amen. He reinstituted the tithe. When Israel backslid, they quit tithing. And when you backslide, you'll quit tithing. And if you're not tithing, you are backslid. Amen. Uh, you, you, you need to have vision for God. Amen. And if you got a vision for God, you'll do more than tithe. Amen. And he instituted the tithe and put the priest back to work. Praise God. And the people brought it in by the heaps. It helps for the leader to set the example. Did you know it? Amen. And Hezekiah set the example. For 14 years, Hezekiah did everything right. And the Bible said God blessed him and he prospered in what he did. Amen. He did it right. He's 39 years old and he's sick. He's a young man. He hasn't reached 40 yet and he's sick. Oh boy, what a disaster. Sister Collins and I was in a revival in Paducah, Kentucky on 11th and Tennessee Street. Brother Harold Hatfield and I have been out looking at trailers all day and we came in. And Sister Irene was ironing and crying and said they just got word that Fred and Ethel, that brother Harold's brother, prince of a man, my idol, ideal of a preacher in Batesville, Arkansas, pastor to Harbor Lights Temple for, I don't know, I guess probably 15 years. And such a ministry, such a ministry and such a blessing they were. Amen. He was 40 years old, or approaching there and two, when they <coughs> crossed those two icy bridges just north of Cave City, Arkansas. Our evening shade one, I forget which. Amen, in that, that general area. And uh, <coughs> he lost control of his pickup truck. It turned over, and... Uh, uh, he walked next door and called ambulance on the neighbor's telephone. And the ambulance came and took his wife. He sat by his wife all the way to the hospital in Batesville, Arkansas. Went all the way back to Batesville, Arkansas. Amen. Some neighborhood of 20 miles. He rode beside her. Amen. And when they found out after test that she was okay and got home, he began to complain with a headache. And Sister Ethel snapped out of it because she realized that Fred was uh, in worse shape than they thought. And they took him to the doctor, and uh, it wasn't too long until he lapsed into a coma from which he never awoke. He died on his 40th birthday in the prime of his ministry. Amen. God only knows. Why? Amen. And the Harborites Temple was wounded uh, <clears throat> deeply by the loss of their shepherd. Here at the age of 39, Hezekiah is sick. And his best friend, Isaiah, comes to him. The prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die. And if that wasn't enough, he said, and not live. Boy, boy, boy. <clears throat> You're going to need help from God at a time like that. Praise God. You're going to need help from the Lord. And you know what Hezekiah did? 
he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. And said, Lord, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I walk before thee in truth with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. <clears throat> One preacher, when he came to pray for the sick, if it was a sick brother or sister, when he first walked in the room, he would say, All right, what have you done? Because he associated sickness attached to some disobedience or rebellion against God. Sometimes it is. Amen. But sometimes it's not. It wasn't the case in Job's case. Job hadn't done nothing but done right. Amen. Hezekiah hadn't done nothing but that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And when God gave him that double barrel prophecy, you're going to die and not live. He didn't have to pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. He said, Lord, I've walked before you with a perfect heart. They can't very many people pray that kind of a prayer on their dying bed. But Hezekiah could. I'll tell you what, it's going to help you to live holy when it comes time to face that hour of trial. It's going to help you to live good. Praise God, when it comes time to face that trial and that test and that hour. Praise God. And the Bible said he prayed unto the Lord and Hezekiah wept sore. Amen. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, and this is an embarrassing thing for a prophet. He has hardly got home. Probably hadn't even got home. Until God turns him around and sends him back with a reversal on what he's just prophesied. He gave him a double barrel prophecy, you're going to die and not live. And now he's going to have to tell him, amen, that uh, God's going to give you 15 more years. Praise God. Woo, glory to God. And and then came the Lord, word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. God heard him. I have seen thy tears. And children of God, I love you. Amen. Oh, praise God. I'm getting older now. I'm going to have to start saying I love you more. Amen. Lest I come to the end of the road and have some sad regrets. Praise God. Oh, yes. God sees your tears too. And He hears your prayer too. Glory to God. And He said, I will deliver thee. Amen. I forgot that was in the Bible. When March the 30th at 6.30 in the morning, thereabouts, I was asleep. A visitor came to me in my sleep, amen, and said, and I knew it was for Todd, I will deliver. He just gave me four words and then disappeared. He just barely appeared where I could see it with somebody. Just barely appeared out of the fog and then was gone. He said, I will deliver thee. I got up and punched in the computer. Amen. And this is one of the first statements I got. Amen. I copied them all down and run them out on the printer. Amen. I reached over and got a blue marker and said, given to me for Todd Smith, March the 30th at 6.30 a.m. and signed my name to it. Amen. I took it to him. Before the operation. I took it to him before the doctor came out and said he's 99% sure it was cancer. Amen. Here, here's a copy of it right here. Amen. 
I took it to him beforehand. Amen. And I had Todd to pray with me, Lord. I thank you for my healing. About four o'clock, a little after, my daughter called me and Todd had come out of surgery and the doctor had visited the folks out in the waiting room. Amen. And Jim had called her and told her what he said. And she said, Dad, why aren't you down there? They're devastated. Amen. I'll tell you why I wasn't down there. I told Todd, I said, I'm going home and plow the garden. You're going to be all right. Amen. Because I had the contract. Hallelujah. I had the word of the Lord. Praise God. Sister Carl and I got ready and went down there. There's a lot of crying going on. Amen. But in a few days, there's some more crying going on down at the Smith household. They got the word, the last word. Amen. That it wasn't cancer. And there's a lot of shouting and crying going on for a different reason. Praise God. Raise your hand and praise God for victory. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. We got the contract, folks. God's no respect of persons, praise God. Hey, how about it? Claim your deliverance tonight. He said, I will deliver thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Well, God gave him a great sign from heaven, said to which would you like to have? Uh, the sun to go back 10 degrees or the sun to go forward 10 degrees? Amen. And uh, he said, uh, well, it's already going forward. <laughs> Put the brakes on. Let it go back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And God put the universe in reverse. Amen. I mean, put on the brakes. And you don't know what a miracle that was when he stopped the world from turning and the sun from turning. And I don't know what all he stopped from turning, but nobody fell off. Amen. From the stop. Amen. I mean, my kids would get up in the back seat of the car and stand up and I'd say, get down in that seat. Don't stand up in that seat. If I had to stop real quick, you'd go through the windshield. Amen. God stopped this old universe going to umpteen million miles an hour. Amen. Nobody went through the windshield. I mean, you talk about a multiple miracle. God did it for Hezekiah. Amen. Put her in reverse and backed her up. Ten degrees. Woo! Hallelujah. And then put her in granny oil and start her out again. And she's been going ever since. They found out they'd lost 40 minutes somewhere in the universe. Amen. And they couldn't find where it went. When they calculated what ought to be happening at such and such a time. Amen. In space. And they decided... One fellow knew the Bible. That back in Hezekiah's day, they stopped the world. Amen. And turned the sundial back ten degrees. They calculated that would have been twenty minutes. It took it twenty minutes to go back and twenty minutes to go back to where it started from. A total of forty minutes. They found out where the universe lost its forty minutes. I'll tell you, saint of God, your prayer is so important that God will stop the world in order to honor your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. To hear your cry. Amen. And this is the writing of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness. I said, in the cutting off of my days, I shall go down to the gates of the grave. I'm deprived of the residue of my years. Thirty-nine years of doing everything right. And it looked like they needed him so bad. 
He had put the house of God back in order. He did things better than any king had done since David, I suppose. Amen. It was a sight. He said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord, in the land of the living, and shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. My age is departed and removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver my life. He will cut me off with pining, sickness. From day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. This is Hezekiah talking. I reckon till morning that as a lion, so will he break all my bones. From day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. He's like Job. He's talking about God. Amen. Then he said, like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. My eyes fail with looking upward. O Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. He said, I did mourn as a dove. Amen. I went back for... About an hour of prayer to my prayer place back there under that window. Amen. And I started praying today. Most of the hour till up close to ten after six. Amen. And uh, I didn't time it uh, perfectly, but I started shortly after five. And I started praying. And that dove came. And he sat on that windowsill and cooed and cooed and cooed. And I didn't know if he thought I was another dove or not. The way I was praying. And he was identifying with me. Amen. And after that went on for most of an hour, another dove came with a more shrill voice. And she cooed a little. I thought it was his wife. And I thought she came and said, What in the world is wrong with you? Amen. But anyhow, that's just my interpretation of what I thought uh, the other dove said to that one. But he just kept cooing. It seemed like he identified with my prayer. Amen. I said, thank you, Lord. Help me to pray. Praise God. And he said uh, I mourn, I didn't mourn as a dove. Did you know the Bible promises a blessing to those that mourn? Amen. My eyes fail with looking upward. Oh Lord, I'm oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? He hath both spoken to me and himself hath done it. I go softly all my years. In the bitterness of my soul. You go through something like that and God bring you out. It ought to change your attitude about things. Amen. Praise God. Todd, in your humbling, have you been a little more humble? Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, it'll make you humble, won't it? Amen. He said that in the hospital. And one thing about it, you sure, uh, uh, people don't respect your privacy or something to that effect. Amen. Up in the hospital with nothing but a gown on, you know, laying there on the hospital bed, people coming and going. Amen. And, uh, oh boy, that's humbling, isn't it? Amen. He said, oh Lord, by these things shall men live. And all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me and make me to live. Hey, that's the rest of what he said over here where he said, I will deliver thee. He said, this is Hezekiah's testimony of faith. He's going to recover me and make me to live. You see, God can speak, but you need to cooperate with him. That's why I told Todd, just say, thank you, Lord, 
for my healing. Grandpa Smith was there. He's, I suppose, Church Christ, if he was anything. Amen. And his Uncle Bert was there. They'd come by on the way to work. We was there early. I told him I had only one regret. I didn't have Todd to sign it. And his grandpa signed underneath as a witness. And his Uncle Bert signed as a witness. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Hey, hallelujah. He said, recover me. Thou wilt recover me and make me to live. And he did live. Fifteen more years. Praise God. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it. From the pit of corruption, for thou didst cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, anybody living here tonight, hold up your hand. If you're living tonight, hold up your hand. Is anybody dead here tonight? Hold up your hand. All you dead folks, come on, hold up your hand. Praise God. Well, amen. Maybe that's going a little too far. I don't know. The living, the living, He shall praise thee as I do this day. Hey, have you been praising Him today? Did you thank Him that you got up and didn't read your name in the obituary this morning? (laughs) Amen. Are you glad? Praise God. Glory to God that the Lord has kept you to this hour and you're still in the land of the living. I'm glad I lived. To hear the doves coo. I'm glad I lived to see the rabbits hop. I'm glad I lived to look at my grandchildren again. I won't live. Amen. I'll turn 64 Thursday. Don't get me anything. I've got too much already. Amen. Don't buy me a card. Spend the money for missions. Praise God. Amen. And, and, and send the gospel to the ends of earth. I've got too much of everything. This suit I've got on tonight was bought brand new at the store by the original owner. And I've got a lot of them. Amen. Praise God. And uh, uh, hey, amen. The Lord has blessed us with so many good things. Praise God. Amen. For the grave cannot praise thee. The living, the living shall praise thee as I do this day. The Father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Amen. But it didn't look like the Lord was ready to save me. The Lord gave him that double barrel prophecy. Amen. You're going to die and not live. It's amazing how God tries people. Amen. God will test the metal in you. He'll find out what you're made out of. Or you say, God knows everything. God knows my heart. Get a hold of your seat. No, He don't. Amen. It's awful quiet. I can prove it by the Bible. Right here. Amen. God left Him to try Him. That he might know all. Speaking of Hezekiah, that was in his heart. Now, if God already knew what was in heart, why did he leave him for? Amen. If he already knew what was in heart, why did he test him? Amen. You don't know what you're talking about. You're just like the hard shell Baptist. What is to be, will be if it never does happen. God made us an individual with a free moral agency. Amen. And we got to choose to serve God over and over and over again. We got to say no to the devil and yes to God. And God's not going to take us to heaven regardless of what we do. Amen. He's going to test us. He's going to try us. Amen. And God tested Hezekiah. 
He said he was ready to save me. Therefore will I sing my song to the strained instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. For Isaiah had said, maybe I better clarify, God don't know everything, but he finds out everything. And in the last analysis, he meant he knows everything. But he don't already know it ahead of time. Amen. He probably knows more about it than anybody else. Amen. But only knows for sure after he tests you. After he tries you. Hallelujah. That's what he did to Hezekiah. God left him to try. Amen. And he might know all that was in his heart. Praise God. That's after he got healed. God, why did you heal him and why did you help him so good and then leave him? Most of us do pretty good if God's given us grace. Most of us do okay if God's helping us and a whole lot of people's praying for us. But it remains to be seen what we'd do if God left us. When he left Hezekiah, after he already healed everything, he found he had pride. Amen. And pronounced judgment because of that pride. Praise God. He said, well, God already knew he had pride. No, he didn't. He wouldn't have had to try him. And then judged him. Amen. Later on. Praise God. God don't waste uh, cannonballs shooting at snowbirds. Amen. God don't waste ammunition shooting at something that's already dead. And God don't waste time looking for something He's already got and already found and already knows. He's got a reason for doing everything He does. Amen. We've got a misapprehension and a misapplication and a miscomprehension of God. Amen. And many times that's what gets us in trouble. We let God do it all. And God expects us to get in on it. We let our wife do her praying for us. Our husband do her praying for us. Our pastor do her praying for us. When in the last analysis, before you really deliver it and keep it, you're going to have to pray through yourself. It's good to have a fellow like Isaiah in your corner, but you're going to have to get a hold of God yourself. I love you. I wish I could do more for you. Amen. <clears throat> but I can't. You're going to have to help yourself. Praise God. Oh, yes, I'll go the last mile. I'll go the limit. I'll run and run and go and go and give and give and praise God and, and then do it some more. But you're going to have to help yourself. You're going to have to dig in. You're going to have to call on God. Hey, old Hezekiah really got with it praying when he said, you're going to die and not live. Bible said he turned his face to the wall and wept sore. You could have heard him all over the castle crying out to God. Praise God. He said the Lord was ready to save me. Amen. He was. It didn't look like it. But he was. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, after the trial's over, we'll be able to say, the Lord was ready to save me. After he tests the metal in men and women and young people. You see, I went through some severe tests in my young ministry. Sold out to God. Lock, stock, and barrel. Amen. But I had to go through those tests. Those deep, dark valleys. Amen. It was then that God made an old song real to me. Troublesome waters are blacker than night. Hiding from view the harbor's bright lights. But under them waters there's an unseen hand. It's a guide in my lifeboat to that better land. Hallelujah. God will make a song real to you in the night. If you'll let Him. 
And then a strange thing happened. Amen. <clears throat> and Isaiah had said, let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. Wait a minute. I thought God said, I'm going to give you 15 more years. If God said it, then I don't have to have Isaiah's plaster. If God said it, I don't have to have this poultice. If God said it, I don't have to rub anything on or take anything. Hey, God gave him a prescription. Amen. And the prophet became the doctor that gave the prescription. Hallelujah. Uh, now listen, folks. Don't you let this so-called uh, uh, doubt and uh, sometimes faith blackmail you that just because you went to the doctor, you don't have faith in God. Go to the doctor, believe in God. Amen. Go to the doctor, trust in God, and he'll get the answer. Praise God. Hey, it's not doubt. It's trying to help ourselves. All healing is of God. All the oppression and sickness, for the most part, is the oppression of the devil. I'm for throwing everything at the devil, but the kitchen sink, if it'll help, rip it out and throw it at him too. Amen. So everything at the devil. Praise God. Amen. Great. God Almighty, don't go on with a headache when two aspirins will knock it. Amen. God gave you that much sense. Praise God. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, don't go on with an ulcer when a dose of Pepto-Bismol will help it. Amen. Help yourself all you can. Believe God all you can. Believe God to give you the right thing. Believe God to help you to find the right thing. Amen. The right herb to throw in your soup. Praise God. And they said there's death in the pot. Amen. Yeah. He complained to Elijah about it, and he took some meal. God helped him to find the right thing to throw in the pot. Hallelujah. Amen. And God created the bomb in Gilead too. And every good medicine comes from a tree. And who made the trees? God did. Amen. And when they found the Indians... Chewing the bark of the white willow for pain. Amen. They decided that they'd find out what it was. Amen. And they were able to synthesize it. Amen. Make a synthetic of that acid they was getting out of that white willow bark. Amen. And created the aspirin. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, it's not a lack of faith to take an aspirin. Amen. Well, come on. Praise God. It's not a lack of faith, praise God, to take medicine that will help you. It's not a lack of faith to have surgery. Amen. Well, glory to God. Amen. And so they put the poultice on by faith. Because God said to. In obedience, they put it on by faith. Because God said to. Brother Branham had some of the greatest success of anybody I ever saw. Amen. He said, I'm not against doctors. He said, I've got a lot of friends that's doctors. And he said, I wanted my son to be a doctor if he hadn't have been a preacher. And we got Christians today that's doctors. Pentecostal, homeless boys, it's doctors that have come right out of our churches. Amen. Why? They're trying to help mankind. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> both of my children was born in the hospital. I know some that have had great faith till it come time for their children to be born and they took their wife to hospital just like everybody else. And if whatever they needed to administer to her, they administered it to her. Amen. 
And both of my kids was born in the hospital. You see, I was kind of deprived. I was born on a high hill in Arkansas in a one-room log cabin. They wasn't a hospital in a hundred miles, and the nearest doctor is eight miles away, and there wasn't any road up to my house. Of course, I didn't know it, and I didn't care. Amen. Hallelujah. I couldn't have cared less. Woo, glory to God. I weighed five pounds when I come into this world, and look how it turned out. Amen. Well, amen. Uh, my children cost to be born $200 a piece. That was a king's ransom for a poor preacher living by faith. I didn't have $200. Amen. But I could scrape a hundred together. And M.H. Wolf, praise God, Gave me a hundred dollars. Went to Brother Cook's church. Didn't even have the baptism of the Holy Ghost yet. Amen. The owner of M.H. Wolf Construction Company. Big company. And he gave me a hundred dollars. Man, a hundred dollars. It one whack was a king ransom back then. And that paid for Kim. And then when Jeff was born in the same hospital, St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Granite City, he cost about two hundred dollars. And you know what? I didn't have to take him out on payments. Amen. M.H. Wolf came through again. Uh, by the way, my wife's doctor all the way through, she didn't charge her anything. There was no bill. Amen. So all I had to pay was a hospital bill. And M.H. Wolf wrote me out a hundred dollar check again and paid for Jeff. Praise God. I could scrape up a hundred dollars. Amen. And, and, and so, uh, both of them are paid for. Amen. And when Harold Hatfield told me at Grand City Camp Meeting, somebody was having a baby, you know, and how expensive it was getting, why well, he said, it takes $400 to get one in the world. We thought the Great Tribulation was starting. Cause it took $400 in hospital bills. Amen. My goodness, see, some of you haven't got yours paid for yet, and they're teenagers. Amen. Because <laughs> it costs more nowadays. Hey, amen, God will help you, and God will heal you. Amen, and he'll keep you from all of that expense. Uh, praise God. But if you have to go, go by faith. And hope to God they'll find the answer and find it in time. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah said, let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster on the boil, and he shall recover. And Hezekiah also had said, what is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? Amen. Oh, Lord, he said, I am depressed. I am oppressed. Praise God. <clears throat> what a prayer. He paid, prayed, O oh Lord, I am oppressed. Fourteenth verse, like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes failed with looking upward. O oh Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. Aren't you glad that God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed? Of the devil. When that woman had went to the doctors and they had uh, done their best.